The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? Here come the McElroys. We've got jokes and bits. We're going to give advice and do funny skits. Laughter it is in store. Come inside and see. It's time to start. It's my brother, my brother and me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show of the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, (laughs) Justin McElroy. Hello, my children. It is I, the ascended Travis McElroy. It's just the name. Griffin is here. Hello. I'm so glad that you, my brothers, could meet with me here. (laughs) Who are we? Oh, shit. You're here with me in the ascended plane. It's the keto juice. I told you once he gets on that keto, I have going to be different. 21 days of salad in a row. Oh, wait. It really is dietary, but your ascension really is based in this. Yes, Griffin. Yeah. Okay. I've had three weeks of salad straight, and it seems that that was all it took. Okay. Let me just uh, let me just crack into your blockchain real quick. Hold on. Okay. Let me just look at the cookie points. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, Griffin. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I traded my cookie points in for one a dune buggy and yeah. two the ability to communicate telepathically. Yeah. So that's actually on here. There's a website where you can tr- you trade them in. Um, it's it's kind of like like jump rope for heart, and you did enough. Cookie yes. points, I guess you got a doom buggy. Damn, I, that's like aspirational. Nobody actually gets the doom buggy. I'm right now, Griffin, coming yeah. to you. I'm tooling around in the dunes. But I'm while, hearing your fucking yes, mind, your brain yes, waves. That's that is correct. So sick, dude. Yes, and um, I had enough left over to get this paddle ball. Okay. Hey, be, be straight with me now, though, Psychic Dune Travis. Yeah. How yucky was it to eat all of those salads? Here's the problem with salads. Sometimes you get a leafy bite. You yes, get one of those? True. No oh, wet. Yes, yes. There's no wet and there's no crumble and there's no beef. And those are the three. <laughs> those are the, One of the three always has to be in there in order for me to have a good chewing experience. Listen, yes. Sometimes there was a leaf that snuck in betwixt my chompers. Right. But that they then those go straight to my brain. The crumble bits and the beef bits and the wet yeah. bits, they go to tummy town. Yeah. And the green bits, well, they go up to Brainburg. And in Brainburg they get turned into to the ability to levitate objects. Oh, you can do that too. Yes, I can, Griffin. Look down. Huh. You're not touching your chair anymore. Um, no, you're right. I've been floating. I just didn't know that that was yes. you. I'm um, levitating your butt. Yeah, no, it feels weird. I can actually, you know what's weird? You're levitating me, but I feel two, like, big hands. And Griffin, I want you to know that was optional. It could, it didn't have to feel like two hands, but I made it that way. Trav, okay. I know okay. how many salads you've started. How many have you finished? I finished every one, Justin. No, 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 no. That's never happened. No yeah. one's ever gotten a salad. And oh, then... let me, let me uh, explain. I didn't complete them. Okay. I no. was finished. Well, that's stupid. Now you're getting into semantics. I'm saying everybody Justin, who's ever eating salad, so many salads has given me the power of semantics. No, it hasn't. Everybody gets to a point in any salad ever where they're like, "I'm done. I qu- this is it. I'm done. I've I would like to play in your salad game too, please. You please got let it. me play with your salad game too. Here's my trick, Justin, and I recommend this and to it everybody. It just keeps going. Yes. God damn it, Travis. It's, it's the, the power salad. I have. It's the salad juice. He's in control. We need to just let Ew, him. Ew, like- salad juice. <laughs> Gross <laughs> everywhere. Justin, you must, build, it. you must build your salad in a glass bowl so that when you finish, you can lift it up, see through it, and say, I have the clarity of salad now. Mm. See, that was nothing. Yes, it yeah. was. It was actually something on this plane. All right. Oh my God. He's got me jealous. I'm going to go open up my mini fridge. I have my office and eat the salad I've got here. Wait a minute. It's gone. Yeah. There's just a calling card here. That's, that's right. That's, that says, it says, now it's mine and it's from Professor Cabbage. Is that what you call yourself now? Oh, wait. Hold on. Professor Cabbage. Griffin, you have to get out of the house right now. <laughs> wait, you're, you're not, not safe. Professor Cabbage? No, Griffin. 
He is a salad eater slash serial killer. Okay, I'll get out of. Uh, oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My yeah, arch nemesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I, so... I have thrown a bottle of bacon bits at your brother so hard that he died. <laughs> Luckily, so much salad has given me the ability to resurrect Griffin. <laughs> oh, thanks, Travis. You Are really you got. Uh, you should have <laughs> killed me first. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I recognize my mistake now. I'm going to try to kill you. I'm going to kill you first. With my <laughs> I want to change the name of the Bim Bam here in 2021. The subtitle is no longer an advice show for the modern era. Now it's the Bim Bam characters welcome. <laughs> they, this year, characters have been welcomed lovingly into every, and we not a, not a big character show, but we've been lovingly welcoming characters in. And I'm, boys, I'm wild about it. I'm yeah. wild about it. Pro- I love pro- it. Professor Cabbage has got legs. He does Not rabbit legs. No, it's rabbit legs, actually. He's a huge rabbit. No, Travis. He's a man with two long, big, sexy legs. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of a different Professor Cabbage. Don't you tell are. me what my fucking uh, Professor Cabbage HC is. I can yeah. be I, whatever I want. He's an audio character. This is fair. Oh, glad glad for you, Trav. Glad Thank for you. Your, glad for your salads, bud. Hey, listen, folks. This is still an advice show, and we are so happy is to be it? here with It is! It is. Uh, we're so happy to be here with you, and we're so grateful that you've welcomed us back into your uh, your incredible lives. Uh, we love you, and we're ready to uh, to help. We're here to help, and I think maybe with all the characters, we maybe lost sight of that a little bit, and I yeah. am so sorry about that. That's true. Uh, listen, we should say at the top of the show some exciting uh, oh. de- developments vis-a-vis the theme song is we've been terribly sued by Classic Key Supo. And this is our final episode because they said um, they said that the, it's not funny anymore, oh, and that they yeah. worked very hard on the Rugrats song, oh, and that boy. I'm I actually am now in jail, and I'll have to go there because Klasky Supo is going to drive me there. People keep saying it's similar to Rugrats. I, I don't don't hear it. Do I hear I don't it? hear. If anything, it's Hey it. Arnold. Really? Hey, Ar- I was also going to say Hey Arnold. That yeah. bah, 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 bah. was that Hey Arnold. I forget. Um, but we are working. We we. Our partnering? Partnering makes it sound like we're doing any work in it at all. We, no, no, no. We are uh, relying fully upon. We are relying fully on a very talented uh, artist who is uh, who's who's working on a song for us that uh, is is very good. We're very excited about it. We'll have more news about that. She soon. sent us a demo recently, and um, it's gonna be very good. It's we're gonna it's, it's gonna blow your asses right off. Well, the, okay. don't now you're getting a little crazy, Trav. Okay, it's gonna put your asses back on. No, the asses will be intact. Your ass will it's move. an enjoyable like, Music song. doesn't do anything to your butt. Music doesn't do it anything. It depends on how loud you play it. That is a issue. I just got it, an email today. Yeah. I just oh. got an email that today my work is having a virtual team building. Oh, exercise. you got me. Justin, you got me. <laughs> Finally, to boost morale while we're all working remote. The event is a virtual escape room over Zoom, not a video game. They are having us attempt a real escape room. The worst part is it'll be done by shouting instructions at a stranger in California who has a phone strapped to his head. Oh, boy. How do I get through this unbearably awkward meeting while still showing my manager I'm a team player? That's from Sequestered in Seattle. They legally can't make you go to an online meeting if you have... Diarrhea so bad you can't get off the toilet, and this may be one of those times where you just got to rip the rip the the rip cord off. And are you sure, Griffin? Because I think it would be easier to go to an online meeting if you had diarrhea so bad you couldn't get off the toilet. It's not proper. It's not proper. It's an okay. it's, it's improper. And so th- this is this is. I mean, I hate to be that that guy, but it, if you can get get you some diarrhea, then they can't make you do it. And do this is so Griffin, bad. This you is real? so bad. Do you need real diarrhea there? Or you can't just like say you have diarrhea? Um, I mean, for me, Trav, you know it's not an issue because I can more yeah. or less at will change my stuff in there. Um, <laughs> this Hachi. this sucks, dude. Wow, yeah. that's rough. So, so they want it. They, they, everybody in your meeting is going to be talking to a real person who's trying, who's a, a, explaining. <sighs> what? 
You know, I once worked uh, in haunted houses for very rich kids' birthday parties, amazingly, or Halloween parties in L.A. for one October. I remember and when I... you accidentally ju- murdered Jonathan Lipnicki. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> that? And then you had to find a kid who looked like him to go out and play him, and you swore you'd never tell? Of course I remember that, Griffin. I okay. did one time scare Jonah Hill very, <laughs> very uh, solidly scared Jonah Hill. Oh, but, that's nice. But... I thought that that was maybe the most demeaning job that perhaps an adult person could do uh, for a short period of time for like a very specialized, like, I don't think this is a job, but I'll do it. Hmm. I think having a phone strapped to your head while you are the homunculus for a bunch of people trying to do an escape. You're one person alone (laughs) in an escape room while a legion of voices yell at you. Could break a human being in fifteen minutes. It's it's not that we love an escape room, Jesus. Oh, like, yeah. We we're all about that life. It's just the idea of your workplace being the the uh, this person being uh, the conduit for all the sort of disparate voices in your workplace scenario. It doesn't sound great. Um, so how do you get through it? I guess. Yeah, I oh. guess maybe like most. Being the most supportive. Yeah. Okay. That's something that every puzzle room needs, but it's rarely done. Like, just sort of like a hype, like, you've got this. Or like, good one. If you lean, maybe it's magnets. If you yeah. say maybe it's magnets every yeah. few minutes, you're eventually going to hit on something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just say, I bet that does something. Anytime yeah. anybody, like, if, if they pick, oh, I bet that does something. That looks like a pattern to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if anybody says that looks like a pattern to me, or I bet that does something, or I bet it's magnets, you just go, yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. Maybe you're this person who's, like, roping people back in, like, people who've, like, kind of checked out. You're the one who's, like, every few minutes, you're like, what do you think, Carol? Hey, yeah, hey, Dougie, where are you at on this right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you at on this? Fuck, get aggressive. Garrett hasn't said anything in a while, huh? Garrett's yeah. being suspiciously quiet. Maybe are he's you in part on it. <laughs> are you part of the escape room, Derek? Hey, I know Derek. You've, worked, you've worked with the company for seven years, but have you been a plant this whole time? You moonlighting, Derek? Huh? You, um, you thief. God, I, 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 I feel like there's the inverse solution to this, which may be better, which is that you get fucking down and dirty hog wild as hard as you can solving this fucking puzzle room with the hopes that you can just get through it the fastest yeah okay. and if anybody else is like i don't know we can check the tra- we're not checking the tree all right the tree had nothing in it you you're done mute yourself i okay. once did an escape room with uh our then one-year-old in the room with us and that oh, you want to talk about a fucking real life escape room that's yeah. really gonna bring some pulse pounding thrills yeah. do it like that a little time bomb in there diaper time bomb Oh, There's no boy. changing tables in fucking Sherlock no, Holmes' people, people office. Would, people rip them down, and they'd be like, ah, Sherlock Holmes didn't have a baby. This is a clue. And um, I just want to say, no, nobody actually knows that for sure. Sherlock Holmes might have had a baby. Oh. Yeah, I've been and writing. Uh, was Travis Patrick McElroy. Thank you very much. Holmes. Son hey. of Sherlock Holmes. Son of Sherlock Holmes. Well, see, I froze Sherlock Holmes in, uh, in a cryogenic chamber, and then he woke up in 1990s San Francisco to solve crimes, and he's my dad. Yeah, and you had to teach him a lot. About I did. He didn't know about how phones work. What the an idiot. The first time this dude had a Slurpee. It blew, blew his mind. Blew his fucking gourd. So I was thinking the other day, guys. Okay. I was thinking about under the table and fishing. Oh my god! And, and can we can we talk about the biggest problem with under the table and fishing? It is that I'm glad we're doing these like these sort of post mortems. Like, yeah, well, production. Really, yeah. we're talking yeah. like production conversations on the dime of the listener. Well, here's They're the problem. Vibe. Here's the problem with under the table and fishing. There's it's, a problem with it. Yeah, it's often so obvious which one's Dave Matthews because it's so fucking horny. Right. right and right. then it hit me, and now allow me to present to you okay. under the table and fishing presents. Your body is a satellite. Is it Dave Matthews or John Mayer? Fuck! Ooh, that's something, huh? That's something. I know, that's something. I know. Here's the thing. I know four of his songs. Yeah. So it's me, Dave Matthews. What's it? You're no, still no, do John the, Mayer. Yeah, be John Mayer. Your body is one. No, that's, that's not what he, he doesn't just walk around singing his it's fucking me. songs. You may as well be. It's me, John Mayer. There he is. Thank He's you kind of for pretty. playing the game with me and my friend, <laughs> Dave Matthews, man. 
Dave I'm Matthews. the Dave Matthews man from the Dave Matthews band doing my yeah. Do you court guys appointed a... community service. Kind of turning to Tim Curry there. There's a lot of people in the studio, and we only brought so many chips. Okay. Now, for I'm this. I'm here too. It's me, James Blunt. You're beautiful. Get out of here, James Blunt. There's you're not room. Beautiful. You'll never guess which song is mine. I'll start. You're beautiful. All right, James. James, you're... you didn't make the cut. We talked about this. My life is brilliant. No, hey, you can grab something off of the table to eat, and we have some T-shirts on your way out if you want one of those. Hello, oh, hello, I... hello. It's me, oh. Ed Sheeran. Oh, boy. <laughs> hello, oh, boy. hello. I don't know what to look do. At me, look at me ketchup. Oh, My man. Pizza. Ed Sheeran and James Blunt are making out. Hello, hello. I love to You're kiss him. You're beautiful, Ed Sheeran. I, I love to fill my mouth with ketchup and do a kiss. Oh, man, it's really romantic, actually. A lot of fucking characters, though. Let's do this game. Okay, round one. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one uh, set of lyrics from both, and I want you guys to tell me which one's which, all right? Oh, this is going to be So it's like head to head. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Option one. The power of your kiss, your words, your lips, your flesh, your bones, exactly what you need. Option two. Am I the one who plays the quiet songs? Is he the one who turns the ladies on? Will I keep shining till my light is gone? Who did you think I was? Oh, so you're complicating things even more. We have to pair them. One is Dave, one is Mayor. Number one is Dave, number two is Mayor. is Mayor, yes. Correct. Yes. Round two. I will beg my way into your garden. I I like that we don't pause to make any jokes or observations about the quiz show. This is a straight up and down real test. Okay. I will beg my way into your garden. I will break my way out when it rains, just to get back to the place where I started. That's John Mayer. So I can I can want you back all over again. This one's John Mayer, because I've heard this song before, and the other one is Dave Matthews, man. Damn it! Let me drink you, please. I won't spill a drop, I promise you. Lying under this spell you cast on me, each moment, the more I love you. Now, this is that... one is where it's going to get tough. Well, that was Dave. You were but, right. Yeah, c- yeah. This one's where it's going to get tough. Okay. Don't hold your love over my head. Don't hold your love over my head, yeah. Don't hold your love <laughs> over my head. Don't hold your love over my head. Come on, come back to bed. And then- That's John Mayer's come back to bed. This isn't that hard, actually. Well, why John do you Mayer's know, always know in bed about... and he just wants you to come back to bed. How do you Maybe... know so many fucking John Mayer songs, Griffin? It's a he's vibe, a, isn't He's it? a major fucking recording artist and I liked to make out in the early aughts. <laughs> so- <laughs> I was feeling, okay, just listen to this actual factual Dave Matthews lyric that Dave Matthews man wrote and said, this is a fine thing to project out into the world that I, Dave Matthews, thought of with my brain. I was feeling like a creep as I watched you asleep, face down in the grass, in the park, in the middle of hot afternoon. Your top was untied, and I thought how nice it'd be to follow the sweat down your spine. And then I kill. And then I killed you. <laughs> and then I killed. The reason you were face down is I'd stabbed you ten it's minutes because prior. Because I'm the Zodiac killer, Dave Matthews man. <laughs> Me and old Ted Cruz did a two hander on Zodiac. That was us. Okay, final round. All right. All right. Option one: You can't get too much love. Don't you feel it in your belly? Go get some. Go get you some. Excuse me. You can't get too much love. The time is right for loving, so come on, come on. (sighs) Option two, had a little love, but I spread it thin, falling in her arms and out again, made a bad name for my game around town, tore up my heart and shut it down. Dave and Mayor. Dave first, Mayor second. Same. Correct. Damn. Okay. Thought that'd be harder, Griffin. I didn't expect you to be such a mayo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't really know his, his new his new shit. I used to be so tender. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Can I, Griffin, what happened? Yeah, where did uh, you go wrong? 9-11. Do you guys want a Yahoo? <laughs> a lot of people sent this one in. It's from, a, it's from Yahoo Answers user Amelia who asks, can you live in a restaurant but not sell food? I was wondering if you can buy a restaurant, for example, a Taco Bell. If the Taco Bell shut down for any reason, could I buy the property and turn it into a house? Just like your average living space, keep the logos and signs up that advertise it as a Taco Bell, but it won't actually sell food, and I technically won't be a Taco Bell anymore. Why would you do that, though? Funny, but I also... 
I think that they wouldn't want you to keep up the logos and signs. No. You might be able to get away with it for a while. Like, I don't think they're going to send uh, Papa King to your house to like, and by your house, I mean the former Taco Bell building. They're not going to send him in to like tear your shit down or anything, but they aren't going to like it. They aren't going to like that. Yeah, but uh, you're just opening yourself up to people coming in your house Un, like unbidden and being like, hey, can I get, some? and you're like, oh, it's not actually, I don't serve food. And they're like, then why do you have all the signage and everything, uh, you left the light on for me. Why wouldn't I? Now here's what's a way more interesting thing. Yeah. There are some McDonald's that are open 24 seven. Could I live in that McDonald's? What do you? You know, why? like in the movie Terminal, where yes. like he just lives in the terminal. Correct. Maybe I'm just like living in McDonald's. So you're saying because it's open 24 seven, then you could live in it? As opposed to a normal, like a regular business hours McDonald's? This point doesn't make much sense, Trav. That's but fair. Could, but could you buy that McDonald's after it goes under and live in McDonald's? Hello, I don't this think is my I'd want McDonald's. I'd want a buffet. If I was going to do this, yeah, I'd want to get a restaurant that had a buffet in it. Right? Because okay. that's just fun. Okay, you have yeah. friends over. It's already halfway done. Treat yourself. But okay, wait, wait, wait. I need you to understand something. If a Taco Bell goes under and I I move in, I buy the building and I move in, and I refuse to take down the Taco Bell signage, the beef that's in there is is one day going to rot. Probably sooner than you took the beef. Okay, but you you suggesting I I want a buffet so when friends come over we can have buffet. You realize you're going to have food is there. I mean all the equipment, Griffin. So you just want to have fun with buffet equipment? I'm saying that the locations are there. I can make, uh, you know, big things of, uh, say, spaghetti or salad or yogurt or whatever, and just dump them in. I could do that already in my there. house. I could do that in my house. With yeah, but bowls. you have to put it. You have to put it on a table, Griffin. And the, <sighs> when you shop around for houses, do you look and pay attention to? Well, here's a here's a cold hole that I can put pudding in. This is why I'll buy this one. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't mean you, you don't see the Travis. pudding. You don't see the pudding hole at buffet as much anymore. I don't think my kids have ever seen a, a, a pudding hole That's in a buffet. True. Especially that, not in the Oh, in the current days? Oh god. That was that was they closed down our Golden Corral here no. in Huntington, guys. I don't know if you knew. Damn. If Golden Corral can't make it in Huntington, I don't know what to tell them. Although I guess this uh this unpleasant time, this challenging year was a uh, rough on buffet restaurants, I think. Yeah, you probably. know, I, I think I would rather, and I know this wasn't the question, but that's never stopped me before. I think I'd rather live on a putt putt course than wow, I would. That's, that and, really has nothing to do with what we're No, I mean, about. I just, a restaurant feels so restrictive. Right. I think I, like, with the putt putt course, you could have, like, I live in the windmill. And like this water trap is my pool. I just feel like it's more flexible as far as the things you could do with it and more fun over time. Because after a while, I think living in a Taco Bell, it would wear off pretty quickly where then you're just in a Taco Bell and you're like, well, there's no rooms and no real place for a bed. Whereas just I think right. with a, with a, okay. I think with a putt, but <laughs> I think with a putt putt course, there's a lot more options as far as like designing it goes. There's a lot what more options just... as far as dying of exposure <laughs> because yeah. it's, it's an outdoor so, venue. You've chosen. So insane what you just said, Travis. It's, a, it's There's... maybe that can I say you've got a checkered past, and I think we're we would all be lying to ourselves. It may be the dumbest thing you've ever said it's on the show. It's so general. wild to say to go into a Taco Bell building <laughs> and be like, no room for, for a bed in this one. <laughs> it's got two bathrooms in it that Taco Bell does already. And a break I... room and a kitchen and a living space. <laughs> when like, was the last you... time you guys went putt punting? There's almost always a cave you walk through or some shit. There's always at least one interior part of the putt putt course. There's like a little waterfall. That's it's cool. It's so exposed to the it's elements, so you monster. Wild. Fuck, man. That... Uh, you guys are being so close-minded right now. You're telling me you would rather live in an old stinky Taco Bell than in a fresh air. That's, that what you just said is fucking hateful. First of all, you don't think that the fucking smell of beef is so baked pleasant, in, pleasant and good? Yeah, no, for sure, dude, for sure, for sure. Maybe pleasant 
for like 10 minutes when you're in the Taco Bell. But if it was all the time, I'm telling you right now, hey, any Taco Bell employee listening to this, you tell us right now. You tweet at Griffin McRae, at Justin McRae. Tell them about how your clothes oh, smell great. when you come home from Taco Bell. Yeah, and I'm and, not I'm not even going to lead the witness. You just tell family, them how they smell. Your family comes up to you after you get home from a shift and gives you big hugs. You're chased by dogs down the street. <laughs> Ooh, what is that spicy beast? All smell? the neighborhood Dennis is home. Stray dogs are c- trying to kill you and Everyone eat your shirt. Everyone grab Dennis and huff him quick before the smoke, before the scent goes away. <laughs> I don't need those tweets, by the way. I worked at Olive Garden where we always came home coated in something called OG water. Oh yeah, yeah um, we've talked so, about OG water. I so believe. yeah, I'm not. I don't need a. I don't need a lesson in that. My my man Tommy Red used to give me a ride to school every day, and he was have have his Fizzoli's clothes in the back seat. <laughs> and God, every time every time I got into his car. It was like a, a an assassin was trying to suffocate me with garlic bread. It was the worst. I'm just saying, a Taco Bell establishment is one bed away from being a home. That's, That's beautiful. it. That actually, you could actually like cross stitch that into a sampler. And every Taco Bell staff is a family. Is you know what I mean? Like that's why I've been trying to get you guys to realize. We're a family here. We look out for each other. Is that why you keep giving me those applications? I'm just saying it's a family, Travis. You could finally have a family of your own. Imagine it. Blood is thicker than the bun. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Think outside the blood. <laughs> inside the inside the blood. I recently quit my job at a certain fast food place. Wow. We didn't part on the best terms, as I told them I was quitting in the middle of a mandatory quarantine. Mm-hmm. While I'm happy to never make the food again, their salads were once a regular lunch for me. Is My so question is this. Was the appropriate amount of time to wait before I can head back to the drive through window I used to clean? That's from uh, I, Wendy's Widow in West Virginia. Right away. Uh, a weird conflux of, of uh, talking points in this episode already here. Um I, cause you, you left, you left the familia and that's gotta, there's a price to pay with that. I feel like mm-hmm. I would say zero amount of time. Like, I think the best thing you could do is walk out, <laughs> get in your car, drive through the drive through and get yeah, a salad. I mean, I travel. I completely agree. I feel like you quit, you get in your car, you pull up to the window, one Southwest <laughs> avocado chicken for me to go. <laughs> And because the best part about that is possibly you do that before the other person realizes you don't get an employee discount anymore. Ooh, it might yeah. be the only, if you time it right, it might be the only way to guarantee you've got the most sumptuous foods is if you prep the chicken and all the <laughs> salad ingredients. Oh, and you're like, yes. I quit. Hey, could you hand me that salad I just made? <laughs> I've already made it. I've made it perfectly. Don't fucking touch it. <laughs> I put the two giant ice cream scoops of guacamole on top, just like I like. <clears throat> Don't mess it up. Um, Man, you this is- The I... taco salad at Wendy's, if I may. The taco salad at Wendy's is has um uh chips and it's got chili right because it's a taco salad yeah there's two things i'd like to address here one the chili the chili on top is the same chili that they serve if you buy chili Uh uh-huh the chili at wendy's is chock full of big chunks of ground beef that are just cut up hamburgers yes so when you get a taco salad you're eating twice repurposed beef which i don't love the thing I do love, though, is the bag of chips that Wendy's gives you says it's crunch time on it. <laughs> and what I like awesome. about that is they're, they're branding the chips that I have had no part. You cannot order these chips. You do not need to sell me on the chips. I'm going to enjoy. They might as well just say chips, chips in crayon. Chips? chips? With a question mark. You're still going <laughs> to fucking eat them. You're going to eat them because these are the chips. But no, it says it's crunch time. So you get even more excited. To oh, eat yeah. Chips. You could say fucking poison on them, and you would still open them and be like, oh, no, these are the chips that go with the salad that I <laughs> yeah, have I, to put on there. I'm not examining the packaging. I, I'm not looking for a best consumed by date. You can't take that back to the register and be like, give me different chips. <laughs> <laughs> I want a refund for these poison chips. No, sir, they're not poison. It's just to scare away the, the fair weather fans of our chips. Yeah, these are for the real windows. We've... uh. I mean, we've had jobs in food service before. I think not counting the concession stand at the movie theater that I believe we all worked at, or maybe just me and Travis, because I did definitely haunt yeah, I didn't, that. I, didn't. that I, I did haunt that particular theater after I quit there. But like the TCBY where I cut my teeth, 
I didn't fucking darken the yeah. door step of that particular they, that it does we can talk a big game here, but it does feel I don't know wrong to me in a way. I never went back. Oh, let me. Uh, Did you ever go back to the uh, to Justin the Olive Garden? Did you ever return to it extracurricularly? To, oh, constantly. Yeah, uh, okay. of course. It is Obviously. the only OG in town, Griffin. That's yeah. true. I guess so. I it's never went back. I never went back to the Jimothy Johns that I worked out. Oh, right. I never went back to the hotel breakfast restaurant that I worked at. Yeah. But I think, aside from the Shakespeare Company, I have not returned to any job I have ever worked at. Yeah. I hardly ever leave them on what one might call a uh, warm regards. I don't have. I mean, I don't have a lot of options here, so I kind of have to. I can't burn any bridges. Like if I burn a bridge with. Uh, the Chipotle in town. I just, I just don't ever get you to know, eat Chipotle. Yes, again, you, you know? no longer get burritos. Uh, I take that back. I did return to the Best Buy I had worked at after I quit, and even though it was six months later, many of the people I encountered uh, were surprised to learn I didn't work there anymore. So, like, just ma- see it. maybe just see take that. that in if you're worried about going back. Chances are, none of them care. So mm, that's we'll something. To- it's called Best Buy, not Best Friends. So. That's true, Griffin, but fucking I bled blue for that place. You know mm-hmm. I did. Yeah, he was always like 573 on top. He That's was always right. like repping the This the is store. a fun thing because uh, Huntington's not that big of a place. Uh, there's an overlap of jobs Justin and Griffin and I have worked at different times. Yeah. It's a fun yeah. Venn diagram that I think we have six degrees of separation connected every business in Huntington. I don't think yeah. we've had the same, except for Cowabunga, uh, the WTCR mascot, a job we worked very illegally at <laughs> very young ages. Indeed. Well, in fairness, we weren't paid in money, but rather in company trade. So yes, we were played in we were script. <laughs> yeah, radio script. I traded it in on a friggin' couch for my parents and who gave me $100. Uh, hey, listen, this has been so fun and I'm loving it, but um, let's take a quick break and go to the money zone. <sighs> oh no. What's wrong, Trav? What's wrong? It is I, Beep Blork. I'm not. Actually, I'm so sorry. You have to handle Beep Blork. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm so have a good one, Griff. I don't love you, bud. But I don't want to have to do it. See, Griffin, this is what I'm talking about. I came to this planet to get what you humans call love. Yeah. Perhaps it is Beep Blork's bad breath? Let's start. Look, can we do something else? Hey, Griffin. Yeah. Gum. What is it? Nobody's really sure. Quip, it's the Good Habits Company. You've heard us say that a thousand times. What does that mean? Flossing, yes. Brushing, yes. But what about the rest of the time, right? We all like to, you know, eat some candy, maybe even chew some gum. Are those good habits? Well, they can be now because gum from Quip, it's new, it's there, and it's good for your oral health. It comes in a really cool dispenser uh, that'll make you look like some kind of, I would say cool, like spy, with a cool spy gadget. Do I hear it? Do you want to hear yeah. the dispenser? Yes, please. Yes. It's like, isn't that cool? Wow. <gasps> the that's gum, the gum, it does actually warn you on the directions to not do it into your mouth because the gum does come out with, I'll, I will say this, Quip, a not inconsiderable amount of velocity. So yeah, you more, do, more stink than you needed to put on there. Yeah, so just do that into your hand and then eat the gum. No, I, th- I think it's the exact right amount of stink. Okay, And yeah. Quip gum can help prevent cavities and fresh in breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free and has tooth-friendly xylitol with zero calories. Now, let's be clear, it's not a substitute for brushing and flossing, but it is a great support for your oral health. And you can go ahead and pair that with your Quip electric toothbrush and refillable floss. And if you go to getquip.com slash mybrother right now, you can get a free plastic plastic dispenser with any refill plan. That's a free dispenser at getquip.com slash my brother, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash my brother. Quip, the good habits company. It says in here, we have to say, it's not a substitute for brushing and flossing. Folks, if somebody made a gum that was a substitute for brushing and flossing, I don't think they need to run ads. I think you probably hear about it, It'd be all over the place. You'd go to CVS and they'd be like, uh-oh, looks like you can only have COVID vaccine or b- toothbrush gum. 
You go with toothbrush crumb. Now listen, it it still gets you nice and clean. I like to pop one in there after after lunch. You know what I like to brush my teeth. Then after I drink my coffee, chew some gum. Chew some gum. That's over, guys. You don't have to keep shilling gum. Uh, you know, I've been. Uh, the seasons are changing. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. God, we're like right in the middle of it. It's the least applicable that could possibly be. But things are cold here. And I realize that I don't have a lot of cold weather clothes, right? Yeah. yeah. But twist, I don't go outside. Oh. So I've got all of these cold weather clothes and they're all ill fitting. And also like, I don't want to wear them. Okay. And so I need to stock up on uh, all kinds of different looks. And there's only one place I ever turn to for that. And that is... Stitch Fix. It's not like online shopping. That's that's such a stretch, man. You you get the clothes. You don't know what size they're going to be. You don't know any of that. But Stitch Fix does all the hard work and just makes it fun. You uh, talk to one of their stylists about your your style, your budget, what the, the size of your different body segments are. And they're going to mail you some clothes to try on. You keep the stuff you like. You send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns exchanges, and a prepaid envelope is included. And... There's no subscription required. Uh, I, I Half my uh, the clothes I own are probably are around that came from Stitch Fix. And the other half are Jimmy Buffett t-shirts. So <laughs> uh, I we really believe in this company and we love the fashion that they're able to uh, extend to us and anybody who's willing to uh, to join up. So you can get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. I'm going first. It's me, Jackie Kasian. Man, she's always this bossy. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm Lori Kilbarton. Uh, we're a bunch of stand-up comics, and uh, we've been doing comedy like 60 years total, with <laughs> both of us, but we look amazing. And, uh, we're working out. We drop every Monday on Max Fun, and it's called The Jackie and Lori Show, and you could listen to it and learn about comedy and learn about anger management and all the things. And Jackie is married but childless, and I'm unmarried but childful. So together, we make one complete woman. Is that just what that one's going to end? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we try to make Kyle laugh just like that and say, oh, my God, every episode. It's a good job. Jackie and Lori Show, Mondays, only on Maximum Fun. Bum, 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 bum. Hi. I'm not cutting anybody off today. Okay. I'm done with that. Bum, 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 bum. All right. But a little, 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 called um, uh, Letters from the Poultry Front. Hey, Justin, can I give you a quick note? Yeah, please. Munch me is not something I ever want to hear you say again. If that, yeah, well, it's just... too late. It's in your uh, hippocampus. <laughs> it's going to live there. Oh, man. Rent free, as the TikTok kids say. Oh, damn it. Uh, guys, th- this is this is intense out there. And I don't know if you've seen some of the bodies lying in the streets, but the war is uh, bloodier and more brutal what? Than ever, and it is not showing any signs of slowing. Hey, what the fuck are you talking about? I am going to read today, not in their entirety, but I'm going to give you a sampling of uh, five press releases, all released within a no bullshit two week window. Understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's check in on. Um, Checkers and rallies. We'll start there, okay? Okay. They're uh, talking about how they're going to um, uh, speed up turnaround. You go into checkers and rallies, and you're going to get out quicker, which is good because the ambiance isn't what you go to checkers and rallies for. You go so you can get your wings and your uh, best fries in the fast food biz, and you move on with your life. And this press release from January 14th uh, proudly announces that they have, and this is the um, the wording that they use. They've launched a new chicken sandwich platform. The Mother Cruncher Chicken Sandwich Platform. It's not 
a literal platform. It's just a, a place to bounce your ideas off of. But it's the mother cruncher, okay? Uh-huh. And they think that you're going to love it. Let's go over to uh, Boston Market where they Wait, uh, are. You yeah, just sorry? said a thing. You just a, said a, a thing, and you need to explain a, what a, a chicken platform sandwich to, platform is. The platform to bounce your ideas off? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> it's just in the press release. What am I, an interpreter? Okay. I'm just telling you what it says. Okay. All right. McDonald's. Let's I'm actually gonna go over McDonald's, okay? The McDonald's, January 4th. The chicken sandwich wars aren't slowing down. Who? Oh. They're gonna roll out new chicken sandwiches in February. We've heard our customers loud and clear. We know they're craving more chicken options. We're confident all chicken fans, from traditionalists to spice. That is a fucking hell of a clause, guys. We'll discover a new menu favorite. They'll come back for time and time again. Uh, And this is all in service. They want to be the best in the biz in the chicken wars. Um, And they got three new sandwiches to prove it. And Erlinger, uh, who is the president of uh, McDonald's US. Of course. Says, developing a reputation for great chicken represents one of our highest aspirations. We want customers to choose McDonald's for chicken because of the unique, craveable flavor that they can only get under the arches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To get started, we listen to cus- consumers to understand our current barriers and potential. The only barrier there could be is people don't like your chicken, <laughs> so they're trying to they're trying something different. Over at KFC, they've launched the. This is from January seventh. KFC has launched the best chicken sandwich ever. So fuck you. They weren't going to sit out the latest round of the quick service chicken sandwich wars. What? The chain introduced its best chicken sandwich ever Thursday in select markets. It's simply labeled the KFC chicken sandwich. <gasps> Bold. It's got a, a buttery brioche bun topped with crispier, thicker pickles and the perfect amount of the Colonel's real mayo. And the no Colonel's, chicken. No, sorry. I want to <laughs> just isolate one for everybody. The Colonel's real mayo. <laughs> I did see a commercial with one of these sandwiches in it, and fellas, they are not kidding about the size of these pickles. It's it's obscene the size of the depth of these pickles is obscene. <sighs> Fuck! I want a chicken Zach- sandwich. Okay, go on. Zaxby's is offering General Sows. Okay. Okay, Zax. Okay, Zaxby's. Now you have me. Now, now you have me, Zaxby's. Zaxby's is doing General Sows chicken wings for a limited time. Oh, not chicken this- sandwich. Oh, but even no. that, I think it's both. It, it when it's like we're all doing sandwiches, and Listen. Zaxby's is like we're over here fucking partying. Now, Zaxby's has got. Texas toast and napkins. You can make a fucking General So sandwich if okay, you want to get nasty. Uh, Zaxby says, an alternative to fast food. All right, bud. The, Zaxby serves fresh, prepared at order, hand breaded chicken fingers with a Z and wings, toss in a variety of sauces. Zaxby's recently introduced a new signature sandwich mm-hmm. in test markets with a choice of Zach's sauce or new spicy Zach's sauce. The company has plans for a nationwide rollout because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. Probably. I have one more. Boston Market, the January 19th, okay? Boston Market boldly launches Nashville hot crispy chicken sandwich. Declaring the chicken sandwich wars are over, you which was recently declared. Bum, 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 continuing. Bum, 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 bum. You can't just declare that. You have to kill everyone else. <laughs> this is, I think this is what they are claiming they have done. Zaxby's just reassured us on this, <laughs> this exact same day <laughs> the chicken sandwich wars are not over. Boston Market <laughs> leads Yeah, in, they so are. Actually, they are over. <laughs> it's on January 19th. <laughs> actually, they're, they're not. <laughs> they, they're not over. Uh, Boston Market says they actually are. Yeah. We've entered the fray with our own take, the Nashville hot 
crispy chicken sandwich. It's the first crispy chicken sandwich in the company's 30-year history, and it's been available for a limited time, which if you're telling me this is the sandwich to bring peace to the galaxy, you should probably keep it on the menu for a while just to limit the number of mothers and sons being separated by the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Alongside launch, Boston Market will introduce new crispy chicken, BLT sandwich, and crispy chicken, no. and white gravy See, meal. that's it. Here's, here's what's up. Here's what I appreciate. McDonald's, they done took the damn grilled chicken sandwich off the menu. They said, if we're gonna get, if we're gonna get, if we're gonna join voluntarily this chicken sandwich war, we're gonna put all of our fucking resources behind it. The grilled chicken sandwich is a distraction. Everybody else is like, yeah, we're, we also are kicking ass with our crispy chicken sandwich, but also check out this one that's that this one's got a uh, zesty italian flavors like no that's not the war though can i tell you guys what's really fucking me up right now what's that what is that we've heard from these five companies and it's like there's been so much carnage already in the chicken wars yeah but we haven't heard from fucking popeyes yet and popeyes launched no, they, no, 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 they no, launched no, no. the first they, shot across it was the opening valley. south no but yeah. this is yeah. what i'm saying is like they launched it and if anyone's gonna finish it I have this feeling that Popeyes might the actually factually kill KFC and or Boston. I mean, Boston Market seems like they'd be the first to go, right? Yeah, then Zaxby's? Yeah. Zaxby's um, is going to make it pretty far, I think. I don't know. Yeah, you think? Okay. I could see them being like the, like, we have these, like, you know, swamp fighter techniques where it's just like, you know, like how we won the Revolutionary War. Yeah, right? where sure. They, you know, I see Boston Market is out there like, oh, we're fighting the chicken wars in like perfect, uh, you know, formation. Formation, yeah. And Zaxby's is like, we dropped down from trees Zaxby's to hand to our sandwich. Zaxby's fucking ghillie suit. Listen, Boston Market is not fucking around because I want to bring you my new favorite CEO in the biz. Well, okay, last week we learned about a sentient potato king, so let's be careful about the okay. words we use. Let's check it out. Actually, not CEO. He's President Randy Miller. <laughs> it's me, Randy Miller, the president of Boston Market. If you leave the market off, it's, it's a man <laughs> announcing, I'm Randy Miller, the president of Boston. Of Boston. <laughs> Deal with it. 2020 is behind us, and so are the chicken sandwich wars. <gasps> We've been bringing the heat in our rotisserie ovens for more than 30 years, and our new Nashville hot crispy chicken sandwich proves there's only room for one chicken expert in this country. Really? Bo Boston market will always be king. <laughs> Jesus, God. With this new menu, we wanted to introduce Music City's legendary hot sauce flavor to all our guests across the country. I Brief, uh, if I may interrupt, Randy. You may not! To please, it's my show. I just want to say it's wild that um, if you want to bring another city's flavor, you should it, probably not name your restaurant after a city. People are going to start to wonder where your allegiances lie. Yeah. There's no better way to do that than alongside our legendary rotisserie chicken and a crispy chicken sandwich that will quickly become the best thing our guests and probably our competitors will have ever tasted. Our Nashville hot crispy chicken sandwich is no doubt the best sandwich out there today. Well, there you have it. And we challenge everyone to put it to the taste. Oh, a taste test of course <laughs> okay you fucking <laughs> fell apart awesome. at the end randy i gotta oh, get you so me. sick randy you have you were me. doing so good randy everyone put it to the taste a taste taste <laughs> test taste test taste, taste. taste. you gotta taste taste it to waste it fuck tea in the wind <laughs> taste taste I just hey, I'm here for my taste. Taste of the best, <laughs> best music city sandwich on earth. Seems like I, we might need to scrap whatever we were planning for next week's episode and just like get into get these some chicken. Boys. I just want everybody to realign their focus on like why we're doing this in the first place, and that is because it is unethical to eat Chick Fil A. But nobody's really doing their weird wet flat pickle mess that I I I haven't <laughs> eaten in many years now. Yeah. Just from a principal standpoint, but hey, I've tried some of the other ones. I remember there was one week for a second where we all maybe got tricked for just a second into thinking Chick Fil A had turned a corner, and then like four days later, they were like, "Hi, I'm just kidding. Here's a million days. dollars." It was, so, yeah, it 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 just made. Listen, 
I didn't eat during that period is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I was like, oh man, this weekend I might That's hope. I mean, that was hope. We missed the weird wet pickle mess, but like it's a principal thing, but nobody's really going for that weird wet pickle mess aesthetic. And that's it would be great if they could all get together to That's what I'm saying. Team up. Just yeah. Uh, that's. I will continue to bring everyone um, updates from the, by the front, way. please. Um, I, I, if I can just mention one more thing. Yeah. Um, this is the last one before, and I just want to. Tropical smoothie sees increased demand in Cajun shrimp menu offerings. Huh. Okay. I just want to. This is the name of the press release, and then you're reading through. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Sounds all very reasonable, and then. The first line of this story is many of its largest competitors continue to fight the long rage in chicken sandwich war. <laughs> and then the end of it is a quote that says, we provided a fresher, flavorful alternative, and it's outperforming any new food item in our history. Maybe 2021 will mark the end of the chicken sandwich wars. <laughs> what? This is from January 19th also, guys. I don't know what's fucking happening, but three different places say... Uh, on this exact same date, okay, Zach, Zaxby's is like uh, the chicken sandwich wars are really continuing. This it's it's uh they're they're not over yet. And then Boston Market said they actually are over. And Tropical Smoothie said, I don't know, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. What ha- these are not the same company. They're it's different a- companies. How the fuck did everybody just decide like the war is on? We're calling it a war. Yes, it's a war. We're all doing a chicken sandwich war right now, and it's not over until we all agree that it's over. Is there maybe some kind of like shadowy organization that is like actually yes. all of these chicken places are owned by the exact same like company? Yeah. And like we drum up the war just to like I don't know. I don't know. Big Tysons. We drum up the war to get more ASMR people to do taste tests and compare the sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I have a Yahoo here that was sent by Graham Robot. Thanks, Graham. It's Yahoo Answers user. They're anonymous. Uh, their name is going to be, for this one, their name is going to be uh, Trey. Trey asks, family safe Scrabble game modifications. Mm-hmm. My Nana won't play the game Scrabble with us anymore because she doesn't want to feel pressured to use an unpleasant or dirty word out of desperation slash lack of other options just to keep the game moving along. I understand her concerns completely. Is there a way to modify Scrabble to make it safe for her to play so she doesn't have to spell a word she doesn't want to? I was thinking of either removing the P, F, V, B, T, C, and D tiles or adding in a lot of the other letters from other sets of the game. Does anyone have any other suggestions? Uh, Updated two weeks ago. We don't allow dirty words, but if it is the only option left, Nana feels like she is forced to, and it upsets her. Updated six hours ago. Wow. The tile swap rule is akin to gambling, so we refuse to use that rule. (laughs) (laughs) I was jokingly going to suggest m- removing the F tiles. Yeah. And they just done went ahead and said, hey, uh, I'll see your joke and raise you a scary suggestion. Okay, but here's the thing. F, you remove that, what do you get rid of? You know, the big Fucking one, fart. The, the F bomb. F if fart. We could, if we could stop, if we could try and be very careful not to just George Carlin it up on this segment, because I want us to be sort of clinical about this. Okay. If you take out the, the U... I feel like that's going to cover a lot more cuss words per letter. Oh, what about the K? No, the C. The, the C's C's in a lot of them. C's in a C's lot. C's doing a lot of work. Because yeah. you got the B word, the F word. I mean, the C word. The uh, B word being butt? No, Griffin. The five letter B word. Oh, yeah, that one. You got the D word in there. Yeah. I feel like C covers a lot. C would cover a lot. C would actually, actually get C. So we've covered. They've figured out that C is the nasty letter. Now, bad news. That does also remove cat. So that that's a problem right there. Um, uh, you you can't use cat. You know what the fucking problem is? Is that because it's Scrabble, you would have to get the blank tiles out too. Because some fucking naughty boy could use those tiles and like put down blank 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 K. And people are like, what is yeah. that? And he'd be like, it, grandma, it's fuck. 
<laughs> that right there you're looking at, Grandma, despite appearances, is a fuck. Or even worse, Grandma's the one that Grandma's the one that plays that because it's the only legal move she has. And then she just bursts into tears. That this I want to question. We don't allow dirty words, but if they're the only option, Grandma feels like she has. I would argue they're not an option if it's against the rules. I mean, that's all these games are. What? Like, it's just not an option. Is it possible that secretly Grandma's are dying to play them dirty words? Okay, and she knows that you all are very controlling, and you'll judge her, and so that's why she's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm so uncomfortable. Oh my God, this is, I can't believe this is the only option." But. Uh, okay, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down. Fuck butt fart. <laughs> now, Grandma, you've, you've just played nine letters all at once to make three different words. Yes, no, I know I feel terrible. I get, but where did you get, there's like two extra letters there. I just found them under my leg. I can't believe I so there. <laughs> I think a really great house rule for your game should be that your grandma can play cuss words but whenever she does, nobody's allowed to say them or acknowledge yeah. that they are a dirty word. So grandma just spells out fuck on the board and everybody just kind of looks at it and then looks at each other and then quietly writes down however many points it's worth. <laughs> and they just Man, that's don't. that's the worst part. Fuck is not worth a lot of letters. Really. I mean, a lot of points, really, when you think about it. There's not any big. Now, if you can spell it F-U-Q-U-E. Now Which we're is how talking. they do in, in, in Montreal. <laughs> oh, the French Canadian oh, style. There, mm, it sounds like maybe just a, you need Scrabble, but with numbers. But then even then you can do 60. Oh, what about graph paper and pens? And you just write down whatever letters you want. But I then, oh, what if the letters accidentally line up? And you're doing it and you're like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah. You could also have like a nasty cousin. And then she calls yeah. in the nasty cousin, that, and the nasty cousin's like, what's up, Grandma? And she just, like, gestures down to her tiles, and the cousin's like, oh, say no more. I understand what needs Ooh. to be done, and I have the will to do it. A pinch cusser, if you will. A pinch cusser, yeah. What if it was just, hey, this, uh, no joke, sounds like a pretty restrictive household. What about just one day a month? It's like the fucking purge when it comes to cussing. Yeah, and it's just like that day. That's when we get out the nasty Scrabble set. That's all only F U C K. Yeah, but then it, everybody's so wild for it. It's like Grandma, you just you, you just played. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but use your imagination. Pretend. Does this say cuff? Does this say <laughs> cuff, Grandma? What the fuck? <laughs> what does that mean? You wrote cuff. bastard. Bastard. <laughs> this just says BAFTA. Like the award? Is that what you were doing? Like the British Animation and Film Award? I don't think that's what BAFTA stands for. I don't think it is either, but, but no. no. British no. and Film <laughs> Television British Award. British Film Televisions. <laughs> it's an award for both film, television, and being British. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're like, oh man, you did some good Britishing this year. Here you go. Oh, and also. Extremely British. I enjoyed you on that television show. Baking and Film and Television. The Buffatada. The Buffatas. <laughs> Wait, you think that's a lid? Yeah. That a lid? yeah. a lid. Let's put a lid on it. That's a lid. Thanks so much for joining us uh, on this episode. We hope you had fun. Um, we hope you're hanging in there and doing well. We care about you a great deal. The chicken wars are- chicken It's tough out there. Not, uh, I'm going to check right now. I'm going to say, I'm going to make a ruling really on this, that they're not over currently. No. So please let me know how. Try as many as you can and just let me know how they are. Uh, listen, this is a big week for us. Uh, many, many months in the making. This week, our how-to podcast book, Everybody Has a Podcast Except You. Years in the years making. Years in the I making. Yeah, that's fair. It is the culmination of all of our knowledge on podcasting uh, up to this point. Um, that book comes out this week, comes out January 26th. Uh, and then on January 26th at 9 p.m., we're going to have a free virtual event to celebrate the launch of Everybody Has a Podcast Except You. Uh, we've partnered with six independent bookstores. If you pre-order from them, you'll get an exclusively designed book plate signed by one of the three of us with your copy as far as long as supplies last. And you can go to bit.ly slash McElroy Podcast Book Event for bookstore links and more event info. We're really, really proud of this book. I really think you're going to like it. There's an audiobook version of it, too. Um, and that we did, that we narrated. Uh, if you have anyone in your life that is thinking about starting a podcast or is just like a fan of podcasts, I really think they'd like this book. So one more time, bit.ly slash McRoy podcast book event. 
Uh, we've also got some new merch to check out over at McElroyMerch.com. we got that Cerebus Pin of the Month benefiting the NARAL designed by Zach Sterling. Uh, the NARAL fights for access to abortion care, birth control, paid parental leave, and protections for pregnancy discrimination. We've also got that Knights Templar 2 sticker designed by Tyler Reed over there and a whole lot more. And one last thing, uh, The Adventures in Crystal Kingdom, uh, the next book in our graphic novel series, is available for pre-order now. That's over at theadventurezonecomic.com. Uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to maximumfun.org. Check out all the great shows there. They have shows like, uh, you know, Stop Podcasting Yourself uh, is, is on there. Uh, they got Triple Click is on there. And a whole bunch more at maximumfun.org. You can check out the other stuff we do at McElroy.family. I think that's it. You want the final? Yes. Absolutely. This final Yahoo was sent in by uh, the wizard Ben Kant. Thank you, Ben. It's Yahoo Answers user Nadia who asks, Are you still considered a Frankenstein if all the body parts came from the same body? Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> My name is Justin Fuck, McElroy. I don't. Oh, man. I'm Griffin McElroy. Oh, man. This has been my brother, my brother, may kiss your dad square on the lips. My bean! Okay, that was the show. Hope you had some fun. Talked for an hour, and now our job is done. Go back into the world, face the day ahead. Please don't tell our grandparents all the cuss words we said. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture Artist owned Audience supported